Welcome back to day two of Breaking Free, Embracing True Health and Wellness. I am so excited to be back here with you today. And I want to say thank you. I had several people reach out to me yesterday, send me private messages, and just comment on how it helped them open their eyes to some things and see have seen how certain things in their life have impacted them in not just their health journey but moving forward in different areas of their life and so again thank you so much for those of you that sent me a message and if you'd like drop a comment down below with any of your takeaways from yesterday and just to do a brief recap of yesterday yesterday was all about learning about our emotions, our suppressed emotions, our limiting beliefs, our negative thoughts, and how a lot of those stem from when we were younger and we weren't taught how to process and release those. And once those get in us and we don't do anything about it, then they just stay with us and they affect us throughout our entire life. And as we get older, we have more emotions that we just suppress down inside of us. So also how it not only affects us in moving forward in our health journey, but in different areas of our lives. And so that's why it's so important to do this inner work and also how it can affect our health. As I mentioned yesterday, um, it can affect our, our health in so many different ways through anxiety, depression, um, digestive issues, fatigue, uh, joint pain, um, also, there have been reports that show like when we have all these suppressed emotions inside of us and stress that it can lead to cancer and other things. So this is why I am so passionate about sharing this and sharing on how to do this work. So today we are going to dive in to the process that has helped me transform my own life and I really started I've, I've been doing work on myself for I don't know eight nine years something like that but it was after I started my journey to uh, stop drinking which God played such a huge role in that um, as I mentioned yesterday when we are dealing with all these suppressed emotions, limiting beliefs, all of that. We often turn to other things to try to just cancel out all of that stuff. So, you know, it's by watching too much TV, um, eating too much, eating things that are not good for us, drugs, alcohol, and my coping mechanism was alcohol that I used for so many years. Um, but October 1st, I will be alcohol free for three years and nine months. And it was really when I turned it over to God and was like, okay, I can't do this on my own. If you want me to change, then I need you. And that is when he guided me to what he knew I needed and helped me change my life in that area. And then it was after that, that he took me on a journey of doing this inner work and really uncovering a lot of my limiting beliefs and things that I have struggled with for so long. So the work that I had done before that, Really, it did help me, but as I mentioned yesterday, it was it was really slow going, but it was when I started doing this type of work that I really started to see transformation in my own life. Um, because I will tell you that <laughs> I never dreamed that I would be in this place right now and 
so passionate about helping women transform their own lives and teaching this. Um, it just, if somebody would have told me that, you know, several years ago, I would have just rolled my eyes and been like, whatever. And now it is become what I feel has, um, is my life calling, um, at least in this area of my, at this time of my life. So the, the technique that I have used to help me you know, work through my limiting beliefs and releasing them is a process called emotional freedom technique, also, also known as EFT tapping. And I have used different uh, healing modalities along the way, but I, I keep going back to this one because this is the one that has had the most profound effect in my life and why I am so passionate about teaching it to others because it is something that is really easy to learn um, and when you when you start doing it and you're doing it on a consistent basis it really can help you transform your life it's just doing that work because we can learn so much from different people different programs whatever, you know, different books, but it doesn't help us change our lives until we start doing the work. Because I went through a phase in my life where I learned a lot, but it's actually implementing it that is going to help you transform your life. So EFT will help in releasing our limiting beliefs, our suppressed emotions. Now, it can also help with stress, anxiety, pain, fears, um, phobias. Also, it has been known to help people with PTSD. So, a little bit about EFT tapping is that we have meridians that run through our entire body. And that is the energy, um, the energy flow, um, our energy channels that flow through our body. And oftentimes those get blocked. And that is through stress, um, not taking care of ourselves. Those energy channels get blocked. And then that can lead to chronic pain, depression, all of that. So this is why it is so important to do this work. So with EFT tapping, it is very similar to acupuncture. We use a lot of the same acupressure points. And I don't know if any of you, drop down below if you've ever had acupuncture before. I used acupuncture when I was dealing with migraines and it really is such a valuable tool. And every time I would go for acupuncture, I would leave and I would just, I would feel lighter. I would feel like the energy in my body was flowing better. And it was because it was opening up those energy channels. So. Um, with EFT, we tap on specific set points throughout um, our body, and when we are doing that, we are focusing on the negative, the things that are causing us stress, problems. We focus on those, and as we are tapping, when we are tapping, it is sending a signal to the amygdala, which is in our brain. And our brain is alerts us to, to stress. It, um, it's that fight or flight mode. And the problem nowadays is that fight or flight can be a good thing. It alerts you if there's danger and gets you to take action. So like back in ancient times when, you know, our ancestors had a lion running after them, it was that fight or flight. It was like, move fast, get out of here. However, nowadays we are under so much stress, our fight or flight, it never, usually never really like goes down. We are usually in a high state or like a medium state of fight or flight. 
and then we still we have things that that keep adding to it like if um you know we get an email from our boss that upsets us our kids do something our spouse says something that uh, that upsets us it's causing us to go into a state of fight or flight which is why as i talked about yesterday when we have all of these suppressed emotions then you're you're going around your everyday life you're adding to that the stress that you're going through is adding to it and then something so small somebody can say something that is really not a big deal at all or somebody does something and you completely fly off the handle and that is because we are we have all of these suppressed suppressed emotions inside of us we are in a high state of fight or flight so when something like so little happens we completely fly off the handle so when we are going through this practice we are um we are sending that calming signal to our amygdala. We are bringing down our cortisol levels. And for those of you that are familiar with cortisol, that is the stress hormone. And when we have high levels of cortisol, it even makes it more difficult for us to lose weight. So that's why this is so important and I, I know I keep saying that it's so important to do this type of work. Now, I first started researching EFT tapping probably almost close to 10 years ago when I was struggling with my migraines and I was so desperate to find something to help and had discovered EFT tapping, bought some books, but I struggled with it because during that time of my life, I had no relationship with God and I was very all about the universe and what we were attracting and what we were saying and the things that we said and how they would come back to us. And so when I started trying to do EFT on my own, I really struggled with talking about the negative because I, in my head, I was thinking, I'm gonna talk about this and then I am just going to attract more of it. But as I have learned, <laughs> it, it, even when we are not saying it, we are still thinking the things. We still have all of this inside of us, which is actually causing more damage. So what we want to do is we actually want to put words to what we are feeling as we are going through the tapping points. And then as we begin to release, then we are going to pour in um, the positivity. And when I said yesterday that a lot of people who start are, are trying to make some um, positive changes in their lives, they'll start with affirmations and it makes sense because that's something that I did and that can be beneficial. However, if we still have all of this, you know, all these suppressed emotions inside of us, then it is really hard to for like our brain and our body to take hold of that positivity because we are like, nope, that's not true. I'm saying this, but it's really not true. And then you're saying the things, but then you're going out into the rest of your day and your actions and your words are not aligning with what you said that morning. So by doing this type of work, as we begin to release, then it all of a sudden you can start using the positive affirmations and you're using them throughout the day it really um it helps you take a different approach to your day now i will say also that with doing this type of work it is like peeling back the layers of an onion so you may start 
um, doing a tapping session and working on something that is bothering you, but then as you are doing it, you have something else that comes up. And I will give you an experience, um, something that happened with me, and this just happened um, several weeks ago, to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. So every six weeks, I take, we have a golden doodle, and I take her to get groomed. And when I go and pick her up, then on, um, on the invoice, when I leave, it has her next appointment they just automatically set it up. So it's always, I've been taking, she's two years old now, been taking her since she was a puppy. We always do six weeks. So I get to the car and I was like, I don't know why, cause I normally don't even look at it till I get home. And I was, I pulled out the sheet of paper and I looked at the date and I'm like, that's not right. That, that's over six weeks. And I started looking, I'm like, that's like nine weeks. And if y'all have a golden doodle, you know that it's important to keep them groomed on a regular basis. So I was like, yeah, there must be some mistakes. So I went back in and my groomer was not there. I take her, I take Willow to a, um, a veterinarian office. And so the groomer had already left, went to lunch, whatever. And so I was talking to the girls at the front desk and I was like, yeah, I'm thinking there might be some kind of mistake. And they're like, oh no, the groomer, she's going to be off for a couple of weeks and then she's busy and she only works like two days a week anyway. So being off and then being booked and I'm like, okay, this is not really going to work out that well. I'm like, isn't there any way that you can, you know, fit her in? And it was like, no. And so... I was like, okay, and so I left, and I went back to my car, and I was so mad. I even called my husband, and I was like, you are not going to believe this. Went through the whole spiel with him, and I could tell in his voice, he was like, oh, okay, and he and he was just like, well, well figure it out. And I was just like, I'm going to call other groomers. I'm just, I'm just, I can't believe it. I even talked to her. She called me to tell me to come pick up Willow. And why didn't she say anything? And I was just like fuming. So I got home and I started tapping about it. And I was just, I was mad. And I was just like, you know, how, how dare this is so disrespectful. And and all these different things and I'm going through the tapping and and then it like things started coming up from my past where I felt like um, I wasn't important and that I I wasn't valued and so as I was tapping through and working through all of this it helped me to realize it wasn't really the groomer that I was mad at. Yes, I wish that when she called to tell me to pick up Willow that, you know, she would have at least given me a heads up like, hey, just want to let you know, it's going to be nine weeks instead of six weeks. And if, she, you know, explaining it, fine, whatever. And, but it's really not that big of a deal. And, but it helped me realize like, as I was working through it, it's like, okay, it doesn't have anything to do with her. It does have things to do with my past, which helped me realize that those are still some things that I need to work on and to work through. So it was a very eye-opening moment because even I was surprised at how angry I was about it. Because in hindsight, it's not that big of a deal it's a grooming appointment, so we can't do six weeks. It's nine weeks. I'm just have to get, keep up with her brushing so her hair doesn't get matted. If we need to, we give her a bath. Not that big of a deal. But I was mad. And here's the thing. If, if I wasn't using this technique, then that anger would have continued to just build up inside of me and then it also would have affected the rest of my day because I would have just been mad going throughout the rest of the day and and just 
thrown off my energy and everything, but because I did my work on it and then I, it peeled back some layers of the onion. So even after years of doing this work, I am still peeling back layers of the onion and was like, okay. And then I worked through it and it made me feel better. Like it calmed me down. Um, I was like, okay, I understand it. These are some things I have to work on. Now I'm just gonna go about the rest of my day. If I would have just hung on to it, then who knows? I mean, something small would have happened and then I would have blown up and that wouldn't have had anything to do with it, but it was because of hanging on to that anger and frustration. So let's get into a little bit of how we are going to um, go through this. And also with the tapping, it's also helping to um, regulate our central nervous system. So. This is so powerful, even when you are just feeling anxious and say you don't even know why, then you can you can tap, you know, if you want to go through the whole tapping sequence or you want to just, you know, tap on a certain spot, then it can it can help in uh, bringing, you know, your stress level down. And it really does make a difference um, because I know that. Uh, for example, I remember after we went through the pandemic and everything was shut down and I remember when everything was starting to open back up and I was, um, we were wearing the masks and had made a trip. Um, I'd went to like Aldi and then went to Walmart and I was leaving and I was just like, my anxiety was like through the roof of wearing the mask and wearing it so much and, and being around, you know, these people and just everything that, you know, had gone on with the pandemic. And I literally was just like, it kind of freaked me out a little bit because my anxiety was so high. So when I got in my car and I'm driving home, all I did was I just I just started tapping on one of the tapping points and then just taking some deep breaths. And as I was driving, I tapped, I was breathing, and then the 15 minutes or whatever it took me to get home, by the time I got home, I felt so much better. So this 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 technique is is so powerful to use and such an important tool for you to have. So I'm going to go through the tapping points with you and give you an example of how to go about using the tapping. As I just said, you can, you know, tap on one point and you can have um, a great experience with that if you are feeling anxious or a little bit stressed. But when you're really wanting to do that inner work and start releasing your um, suppressed emotions, your um, limiting beliefs and all of that, then this is an actual tapping session that you would do. And what you first start out with is a setup statement. So let's just say, what do I wanna do? Um, let's say emotional eating. Okay, since we're, we're talking about health and wellness here, um, to use this work, emotional eating. So for example, your setup statement would be something like, even though I use food as a coping mechanism to deal with stress, I am, you can either say, I love and accept myself, although some people struggle with that, um, saying that they actually do love themselves, so what you can say is, I am learning to love and accept myself. So that is going to be a setup statement that you are going to repeat three times as you are tapping on the side of your hand, which is your karate chop point. Then what you're going to do is you are going to move through the rest of the um, the tapping spots. And one spot is uh, right here where your eyebrow begins. 
And all you're gonna do, you use your fingers and you're going to tap, um, not real hard, but you wanna tap enough to feel it. So that's gonna be a tapping spot, the side of your eye, under your eye, and then under your nose, and then under your lip, and then the next place is your collarbone. You're gonna feel where your collarbone is, and then just drop down a little bit, and that's gonna be another tapping spot. The next one is going to be on your side, and for ladies, that's about where your bra line is, and then on the top of your head. So you're going to start out, as I said, repeating your setup statement three times. Don't overthink it. You just go through and you tap there, and then um, you go through the rest of your tapping spots, and then you can make it as simple as saying, emotional eating. I use food to deal with my emotions and make it, you know, very simple on what you're saying, especially if you're just starting out. Or you can really get in and start digging deep and say exactly how you feel. I'm so disgusted with myself that I keep doing this. I keep falling back to old habits. I just, I hate myself because I keep doing this. Whatever feelings that you are feeling, say them. Now, something I forgot to add in, before you actually start the tapping session, you're going to want to rate yourself on a scale from one to 10. And one is like, eh, I'm being bugged by this, but it's not too bad, to a 10 that is you, it is really affecting you you are really stressed, you're really mad, whatever it is, because it is important to have that um, so you can you can see kind of where you're at as you're going. So what you're going to do is then you're going to tap through the points and your karate chop point, you only do that at the start of a session. So you're going to go through and you're going to tap and you're going to, you know, just say whatever it is that is on your mind, something simple like emotional eating or really digging deep on how you feel. And you're just gonna, going to keep tapping on that. And then you're going to, after, you know, maybe a couple rounds, kind of rate yourself and say maybe you started at a 10 and you're down to a five. And you can either continue on with some more tapping or you can start working on the positive. You don't really want to start pouring in the positive until you feel like you can actually kind of believe what you are saying. Otherwise, it's just not really going to work. So you don't want to start out at like a nine and then be like, okay, a couple rounds later, be at a level eight and start doing the positive. You're really gonna need to bring that number down a significant amount to where you are truly feeling a release before you start adding in the positive. And the positive can just be something simple like, um, I am, I'm growing and I'm learning and I'm learning different ways to deal with my stress and my emotions and whatever it is, whatever feels true to you, then you want to go through a couple rounds of doing the positive. And then afterwards, I always sit there and I just take a couple of deep breaths and feel gratitude for having this tool being able to work through all of these emotions. And the thing is, it's like, just because you do that once, it doesn't mean like, okay, never have to do it on, on that again. No, this is truly a lifestyle and we need to continue to do the work along the way. Um, because every day, I mean, you may feel like you have you know, made great strides in something that has been bothering you, 
but every day we have things that come up that affect us and we need to learn how to process it and re release it. And as I said yesterday, I gave you that homework assignment and I really hope that, you know, you, you took it to heart and really started paying attention to some of the things that you're saying, that you're thinking, your triggers, because when you have things that trigger you, like the groomer deal with me, that was a key to unlocking a door of having more breakthroughs because I took the time to work through it because I was like, this triggered me, it triggered me for a reason, and I started to work through that. So this is why, you know, it is so important to continue doing this work on a consistent basis. And like I said, it, we are peeling back layers of an onion. And, you know, I said that a lot of the things that we are dealing with stem back from when we are younger and you know depending on your age you know i'm gonna be 51 next week you know i've been holding on to a lot of stuff for a really really long time so it is so important to be able to to work through this and and be compassionate with yourself so often we will beat ourselves up for certain things and we need to learn to be able to have compassion for ourselves and to learn to love ourselves um, because that is something that I believe a lot of us need work on. Um, and it is something that I can say now that I do love myself. I love the work that I've done. I love the work that I'm continuing to do. And it took me though a long time to get to that point because I was just really, um, I was so unhappy with myself. And especially when, you know, I was drinking and I couldn't break that stronghold. And, and I always looked at the negative and the negative things that I had going on and beating myself up instead of um, treating myself with compassion. And so, like I said earlier, when you have all of this stuff that is built up inside of you and then all of a sudden you like flip out on somebody then yes apologize to them but treat yourself with compassion especially when you're when you're learning to do this inner work don't beat yourself up like oh my god there i go again i just you know went off and i shouldn't have done that because i'm doing the inner work and no 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 take a deep breath and be like okay i did not handle that in the right way and that just shows me that I still have some work to do and I am doing the work because here's the thing, a lot of people won't do the work. This is, I, I hadn't planned on sharing this, but I remember I was listening to a podcast and I know I'm not gonna have the exact numbers because I don't have it written down, but it was, they, they interviewed so many men, so many women, and the question was something about, okay, you can either take 15 minutes and spend it with your thoughts and emotions, or you can have an electric shock, okay? 15 minutes with spending just quiet time alone with your thoughts and feelings, or have an electric shock. And I believe it was 60% of men chose the electric shock. I believe it was 30% of the women chose the electric shock. Rather than spending 15 minutes <laughs> of quiet time with their thoughts and their feelings. So what does that tell you? That's why so many people, it's like, they're, they zone out by watching TV or eating food or drinking and, or drugs or whatever it is because we want to do everything we can 
not to have to deal with all of that stuff. So I just, when I, when I was listening to that podcast and I heard that, I was like, wow, that is pretty amazing. The numbers that were pretty staggering of people that would rather have an electric shock than spend time, you know, processing or whatever, just spending alone time, quiet time with their thoughts. So anyway, so this is the process that has really helped me transform my life. And tomorrow I am going to go a little bit deeper and incorporating God's word. And I wanted to give you an idea today of how to use EFT tapping with out incorporating God's word because I understand that some of you that are going through this, maybe you just don't have that relationship with God, your thinking is a little bit different, your beliefs are a little bit different than mine, that is completely okay. I respect you just like I hope you respect me for my beliefs. And so I wanted to show you, you know, just how to do that setup statement say the things that you need to say, and then just some positive affirmations to end it out. And then, um, you know, hopefully as you continue to go through that, you'll have more breakthroughs as you are going. Now, tomorrow, I am also going to have an offer for you. If you would like to continue working with me and to go a little bit deeper. Now, I know that some of you can take this information and you can run with it and being like, nope, I'm good. I know how to incorporate in this into my life. I'm going to do it. And you know what? Then I wish you nothing but the best. But I know some of you are like, yeah, I need more guidance. I want to go deeper. I want to learn more about this. And you want more, you know, of, of guidance through this journey. And because that's how I am. I mean, just like when I first started trying to learn EFT tapping on my own and then was like, mm, I'm, I'm just not getting this. I don't think this is going to work for me putting it aside, and now look at what happened. I'm teaching it, I got certified in it, and it is a very big reason why I have had so much success um, in my life and in my growth is because of the one thing that I tried to learn on my own, didn't really know how to incorporate it, but then after, you know, God took me on the journey of not drinking, then a few months later, it was kind of crazy how it all worked. A few months later, I was on um, like a free challenge kind of like this. And the, the woman on there was uh, talking about EFT tapping. And I was like, are you kidding me? I already kind of know about this. It's not going to work for me. But... I, when I when I started to have a better understanding of how it can work and how it can help us release these suppressed emotions and different things like that, I was like, okay, there might be something to this. But I knew for me that I, I needed more guidance in doing the work. And that was when I invested in her program and went very deep into that. And that's when I started to become so passionate about doing this work and then turned around and got, got certified so I could be able to help others. So I will have that offer for you tomorrow. Um, so I will be sharing more of that with you. And so for now, I, I just, I hope you take the information that one, you learned from yesterday about becoming more aware, becoming aware of, you know, what triggers you, the thoughts that are going through your head. And then with today, with learning the tapping and even to begin with, you don't worry about, oh my gosh, what setup statement do I have? What do I need to say? What I recommend in your little homework assignment for today is to just get yourself familiar 
with the tapping points. And that's the side of your hand, uh, the beginning of your eyebrow, the side, of, um, the side of your eye, under your eye, under your nose, uh, under your, your lip, and then on right down under the collarbone, on the side, and then on the top of your head. Don't overthink it. Don't be like, oh my gosh, is there, you know, is there one little point that I have to make sure? Those are the areas. And when you use, you know, I usually use two to three fingers when I'm tapping, you're going to have it covered. So don't overthink it, which if you're like me, you have a tendency to do. But I'm here to tell you the important thing with this work is, is that you're actually doing it. Because like I said, even just going through the tapping points, you may be feeling, you know, a little stressed about something and then you start doing some tapping and you're like, huh, okay, I feel a little bit better. And real quick, before I jump off here, you may have something where you're out and about and you notice something that triggers you and you know, let's say you're in Walmart or something and you can't just really stand there and just start tapping, <laughs> but, or you can, <laughs> completely up to you if you feel comfortable with that. But what you can do is you can make a note of it and address that later on when you're alone and you have time. And then think about whatever it was that triggered you, kind of go back to that and how how much that kind of like got you worked up so that way you you can kind of go back to how you were feeling at that point which may be like a level eight or nine so that way you can work through that and bring that number down and then like I said go through some positive statements and um, see if that helps you out. So I hope that you have found this valuable. I really do enjoy sharing this information with you. And then tomorrow is going to be our final day for this free masterclass. And like I said, I'm going to be sharing an opportunity if you are interested in going deeper with me and um, and joining joining with me on this journey it would be a privilege for me to be able to guide you on your journey so thank you so much for joining me and i look forward to seeing you tomorrow have a blessed day